ladies and gentlemen, to episode two of Coffee Break. Yes, sir. So, it's been a big week, Chris, for both of us. Um, uh, I don't want to go into the markets as much as, um, well, first of all, let's talk about the week, but I want to be a little bit less technical today and talk about more day to day. One thing that uh, a big meeting we have coming up, me and you, which I'm very yeah. excited for, is you said, Zach, let's put on 20 outlandish goals on the table exactly. and then just start dissecting those goals. So tell me about where that came about and uh, let's go from there. So many places, and I've I've heard on podcasts, YouTubers, people that are you know that've had a bunch of success. They've always manifested their goals. They've written them down. They've talked and shared them with other people. So I thought it was important for us. Year end is coming, just to kind of digest, see where we want to go, and write our goals down in paper. And why did I want to do these outlandish goals? is because I know what our potential is. I know we're both big dreamers. We work extremely hard. And we know that if we put our minds to something, that anything's possible. So I wanted to see these, these crazy goals that we would come up with as, um, as a team. And not only that, what I loved is after I had sent you that, you had told me, Chris, look, I love the idea, but talk to, but I want them to be smart goals. So Throwing it back to you, I want you, for, for the sake of our listeners, to talk about what makes a good goal and go a bit more in depth into what a SMART goal is uh, on that side. So a SMART, you, you, we hear that a lot, we see it a lot, but what's a SMART goal? First of all, it's specific. There's yeah. a big difference between I want to be one of the biggest firms in Quebec and I want to have 100 million of assets under management by 2026. Because if you can't measure it, there's no way for you to track the progress of your goal. Yeah. Number two, that's SM, measurable. I just said it. If you can't measure it, you can't track it. So how do you hold yourself accountable? A, attainable. So obviously, if you're going to say, I want a billion of assets under management by next week, who are we kidding? You know, so it's got to be something that's also relatively attainable. Um, R is relative. Well, it's got to be relative to your current goals of where you're going. We're not going to set a goal for a uh, number of, I don't know, um, uh, number of uh, touchdowns scored, but we're a financial service firm. You know, I, the first example that came to mind, Looney Bowl's coming up. The Gators are playing in the finals tomorrow. So that's what came up. Yeah. But uh, it's got to be relevant to what you're actually working towards. And the net, the last one, which is my favorite, is timely. Put There's got to be a timeline. You can't just say, I want to be one of the biggest firms. By when? What What are we tracking? Again, what are we measuring if we don't know when the end goal is? And timely, that time horizon brings me to the favorite thing that I love to do. And we do it all the time. As soon as you, you're, you're a visionary. You always have these ideas. And then I try to put the wheels in motion to actually attain that goal. But the biggest thing, reverse engineering. That's what we do with our clients. When we look at the end goal, whether it be retirement, selling their company or what, regardless of what it is, but reverse engineering. What do I mean by that? So let's say the goal is X, 100 million assets under management by 2026. Well, where do we need to be? That's two years from now. We're at the end of 2023. Well, if that's where we need to be in two years, where do we need to be by the end of next year? Right. And if we want to, once we've determined that, well, what does Q4 need to look like next year to make sure we attain that goal at the end of 2024? And then we reverse engineer back to Q3, Q2, Q1. And then we take that, what's the goal for Q1? And then we dissect it to now it's a weekly goal. And then it's daily habits. So whatever goals I have has to be a smart goal. And then I reverse engineer for where the time horizon in uh, time horizon is. And okay. then after that, I break it down all the way down to daily habits. So now I have my daily habits that I know if I do that every day, I'm going to get that two year, five year, 10 year goal that I set for myself. So that's one thing I do. And I think it's very important. I know I love it. And especially, I think that's what distinguishes us with uh, a lot of other firms. We are a goal-based planning firm. 
we always ask our clients what their goals are. The ones that we see most often, especially with our younger clients, it's they want to buy property. So mm -hmm. we help them out. We put them in place with the right people and whatnot. But I agree that having these smart goals, it's uh, very important. Not only that, it kind of makes it even more realistic, if I can say that, that these goals are going to happen because it's not just putting it out there and letting the universe do its thing. You're actually putting in what you're going to need to do. You reverse engineer it, as you said, in order to put that, uh, that goal in place. Um, would you, uh, look, I'm curious. I'm sure the listeners are curious. Share with me one of your outlandish goals that you had Ooh. prepared, something you take the time, read through your list, but I want to hear one of your goals, Zach, that you had written down. And just before you do that, I kind of want to sh share with you that one in detail is one of mine yet, but I broke mine down into three categories. For me, okay. and especially with my life, what I find it's extremely important, I have my business and wealth goals. So that's on one side. I have my health goals, which mm -hmm. is on another side. And I have my personal family goals on, on uh, so that's for me, those are my three pillars. And being a, not an overachiever, but someone that wants success, I want to make sure I thrive in those three fields. Because for me personally, it doesn't mean much if I'm extremely successful on the business side, but on the family side, on the personal side, things aren't going well or vice versa. I don't want to sacrifice my health. And I think we're on the same page for that for anything else. Cause at the end of the day, that's one of the most important things too. And if you have a good health span, they live long, wealth will grow. And so they kind of all intertwine. So I just wanted to share that real quick, but can you go into details in one of your goals that you had shared uh, or you had prepared? So again, this is, this is vision, right? This is why we do yeah. this. So I don't know how much in detail I can go about how we're going to achieve this, but I think it's very realistic. And it's something that is very important to me because, Chris, we deal with money. You know, we help people with their retirement and all that. So dealing with money, uh, we can't always help everybody right away. You know, we've talked about it this week. Sometimes our first conversations with clients is, look, this, this ugly debt you have, you have to take care of that first and then you come work with us. And obviously we can't take everybody as a client just because just pure volume, you can't always, you know, your time is limited. So one way that we kind of pay back is through this podcast, uh, the content that we put online. So that's a way to kind of educate people and help those that we can help directly through our services. But another thing that's really important for me is I want to build some type of charitable organization with FG. Uh, nice. Christmas time is coming up. Me and my fiance will be um, uh, going out for Christmas and getting involved in the organization that, you know, when you see grocery stores, they collect canned goods. Well, those canned goods, there's an organization that's going to take them. They do boxes and they deliver them to families. I've been the one who's delivered the boxes to the actual families in the past. Now we might be the ones who just help make the boxes, but it's one thing that's very important to me is to give back. And now I want us to do something with FG, with the platform that we have in the long term, is to actually create a charitable organization with FG. So that's one of my big goals. I don't even think it's outlandish, but it's something that if we don't set in motion, if we don't hold each other accountable and don't put a time horizon, it's easy to forget. So that's one that I want us to do. And I think that's very realistic within the next five years. So if you want me to put a timely next five years, um, uh, specific, not there yet, but we both know that we love helping youth sports. Um, uh, we're already involved there. Um, uh, but also things like that Christmas, I just, Christmas is a time of giving and I love that concept. So something to brainstorm about and something that I'll add to the SMART goals is yes, specific, measurable, attainable, relative, and timely, but a huge thing that's going to have a massive impact on your goals is having someone to hold you accountable. And that could be a business partner. Like I know that Chris, you hold me accountable. I'll hold you accountable. We both have very big ambitions and we hold ourselves to a very high standard. And I know that if I start slipping, you're going to catch me. Same thing, vice versa. But yep. sometimes if you don't have a necessarily a business partner, use social media to hold, to hold yourself accountable. For me, 
I did that when I want to, during COVID, want to wake up at 5 a.m. every morning. What did I start doing? Every morning I'd post that I'm out there at 5 a.m. Not necessarily the show, but I knew that, and it happened every time. If I missed one morning, are oh, you not up at 5 a.m.? Hey, tough guy, you're not, a, you're not gr rise and grind, no rise and grind. That's how, grind, people, exact, that's how I was holding myself accountable because I knew if I'm skipping, people are going to call me out. And they weren't calling me out necessarily to make sure I got my workout in. It was more of like a gotcha, you didn't do it this morning, but that's what held me accountable. So find a system to hold yourself accountable, whether it's through someone or just saying your goal out loud to social media, and then people are going to hold you accountable. Maybe not, but I don't know. To me, when I make it public, it becomes more, I want to live up to that. So that's one thing I think is really important in smart goals and accountable goals. Find a way to hold yourself accountable. Yeah, you mix both of those. It's a winning recipe. And it kind of goes in line with that mastermind we had created a while back. Yeah. The fact that we were, wow. you know, 12, 12 guys meeting every single Sunday, there was a sense of accountability as well on what we would said we would do and actually doing it and putting that in place. It's, uh, it's very important. Yeah. So I, I totally agree with what you said. I love the fact that you're thinking about that ch charitable organization. I know when we're speaking, especially on our marketing meetings, we're looking at ways, okay, how do we give back? And mm -hmm. a lot of the times too, our, our clients don't necessarily see what we do for the community, where we're giving back as. Recently, we had donated to Fight for the Cure, which is the, the Ottawa Regional uh, Cancer Foundation for one of my friends from high school who uh, went out, raised a lot of funds in, this, uh, in the six figures, which is huge and had uh, a great event on that side, but no, just to find ways to give back. And what's great, Zach, is we're not gonna forget where we came from because we've mm -hmm. seen these you know, financial difficulties, hardships in our surrounding with people that we know ourselves. So it's important to find a way to give back. Uh, I'll share with you real quick, one of my goals for uh, that I had written down is I wanna, well, I want us at FG to be able to personally bring someone from starting out, let's say they're just out of school, whatnot, first job, whatnot. But I would love to create 500 millionaires. Mm. For me, that is one of my, not because, oh, they need to be a millionaire, not for the status or whatnot. It's just, I know the actual true potential of people. Uh, a lot of people, if they start young, they're diligent. They put their money aside on a systematic basis. They pay themselves every time that money comes in. It's very doable, one thing. And two, it's that a lot of people don't realize when you actually go to retire, you need significantly more than you think. Mm -hmm. I mean, if not, if you don't have a defined benefits pension plan where you work for the government, you'll have 70% of your income for life, which is worth millions. You have to put it away yourself. Every single dollar that you worked hard for, you'll have to put that money away. So it's putting those things in place. We talk about a safe withdrawal rate. If it's at 4%, you have a million dollar aside. It's about 40K a year. 40K a year when you're working and you're used to making 100K, if you have nothing else, even with social, with uh, CPP and old age, it's, it's not a lot. So you got to make it work. You got to do that. And I love goal setting. Uh, I think it keeps us not necessarily motivated, but disciplined. As you know, mm -hmm. uh, I don't personally believe much in motivation because it's it's like this. Sometimes yeah. you're motivated, you're going at it, but if you're disciplined, you do it every single day. That's where you see the results. It's the same thing as going to the gym and investing. If you go and you decide, all right, I'm going to work out extremely hard for three weeks, you might not even see any results after three weeks. Vice versa with money. If you do it for a month or two, you don't really see anything, but a year after year after year, it shows. I, I've seen it myself. I started working out when I was 14 years old and I went pretty much 10 years without missing a single day at the gym. That was in my face. That was all I cared about. I was in the gym every single day. And now I've, I've scaled quite a bit back on the, on the fitness side, but that base is still there. All those dividends I paid in for mm -hmm. the past 10 years, they're there. And if I decide to go back hard, it doesn't take my body a long time to get back to where it needs to be. Same thing with money. You start small, but it just compounds. And it's that snowball effect like many things is. That's 
consistency for me is the key in anything that we do, whether it's money related, whether it's fitness in your relationships, whatever it is, it makes such a big impact. And I think that's one of the keys as well to, uh, to success on that side. One of my favorite analogies, and we're talking about goals. If you want a good book, audiobook or whatever, even if yeah. you don't like to sit down and read, listen to an audiobook, you've probably heard this. Well, I know you've read it, but people watching Atomic Habits. Yeah. Atomic Habits is in a duet. No, it's upstairs. Okay. Um, uh, but Atomic Habits is a great book. But the analogy that just flipped my whole mindset yeah. was, and I've brought this up with you before, but the ice cube. Yeah. So I'll say here, but it's a great analogy for goal setting and exactly what you said, because at first you don't see the results right away. So it's hard to stick to it because you're expecting after five workouts or even five weeks of working out, where's the six pack? It's not there yet, but it's because you got to stay consistent over months and even years, especially with your finances. A few months isn't going to do anything. A few years, not much. 10, 20, now you're talking. So the ice cube. What it is, is that you put an ice cube in a room, the room's at minus 30 degrees Celsius. Yeah. We're in Canada, right? Celsius. Um, uh, and every minute, the room gets one degree warmer and you want to melt the ice cube. So that's the goal. Yeah. So you look at the ice cube, one minute goes by, minus 29, another minute, minus 28, like that, all the way. So for 30 minutes, if you just look at the ice cube and not the thermometer, zero progress you're just right. looking at the ice cube it's not melting but once it hits zero and one degree and two degree now you start seeing it melt but it's not the progress didn't start there there's been a full 30 minutes there's been from minus 30 all the way to zero you've had all that progress but didn't see any results mm -hmm. and then boom all of a sudden you start seeing it melt so that's a big thing with whatever type of goal just think about the ice cube because it's it's not because you're not seeing a result that you haven't progressed and another thing is now I'm going to butcher this one because I don't know the exact numbers, uh, but have you ever heard of how long it takes a bamboo to actually grow? No, I believe it's, I wish we had like a, a, a Joe Rogan's. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, hey, look it up, uh, it up yeah, pull it up. One but, day, one uh, day. Exactly. Hey, put it in the goals. I like um, it. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's like multiple, multiple years. If you plant a bamboo, you won't see anything, no growth at all, because just the roots are building underneath. But if you just look at the surface, nothing. And then within three months, nine feet in the air. So it's me. years and years of the roots are just building. And then after that, within months, it's multiple, multiple feet up in the air, very tall. So again, you don't see the progress. And then all of a sudden, it shoots up. All that to say that I think it's really important in finance because a lot of times when we start with clients year one, they're like, oh, I've been putting a hundred every two weeks and all that. And we're just at that. Even if their portfolio did well, you yeah. could do 10%. But if you just put a hundred dollars every week or every two weeks for the first year, 10% on a small amount doesn't really show that much. Yeah. But then year over year over year, it makes a massive difference. So I think the toughest thing with goals, it's to stay consistent and to keep doing it when you're not seeing the results because there's been progress. They're just not right in front of you yet. Another thing, uh, I think you have the book on your shelf there, but Extreme Ownership, that one yeah. was, a, was a game changer for me. Yeah, it's cool. just instilling that discipline, even when you don't see that progress and just going at it, going at it. We've been in one of the largest market drawdowns now since the great financial crisis, the global financial crisis. Yet, the biggest gains that we've seen in the markets have been after these largest drawdowns, after a 20 year period, the largest gains are after these gains. So we don't know if the market's gonna be another year down, if it's gonna be slow, but once it starts going up, the people that have been paying themselves, kept investing, went at it, they're gonna see the most results out of it. It's when the tough times are, you know, when times are hard that you keep going at it, that's when you'll see uh, the most benefits. And same with the bond market. We're about 39 months in uh, uh, of a bear market for bonds. Same thing. And just go at it, keep at it. I love the topic for today because I not it's applicable for everything. Yeah. Applicable for your finances, for your health, for your work, what you're doing. So I think there's a lot of value there for our listeners today. 
on uh, on these goals. And I can't wait for you and I to sit down and look at the, our goals list because I know we're going to get pumped up. We're going to have fun. We're going to challenge each other. And the funnest part is it's five years down the road, 10 years down the road. It's like, hey, remember those goals we wrote down? Let's go. Oh, you had said this number, yet we're way above that. You might have sell, sold yourself short or vice versa. Like what happened on this one? Uh, okay, but you, you know, you have to hold yourself accountable too. Something didn't happen. It was attainable. Have to see what you didn't do right and then adapt from there. And it, to that point, before we wrap it up, so far, I'd say in the past two years, since I quit my nine to five, yeah, there's not a single goal that I set for myself that I'm not ahead of schedule. That's so true. we actually have a tendency to under, so that's actually a, a, a saying you overestimate what you can do in the short term, in, a, in, in the short term, but you yeah, so what you can do in the long term. Exactly. You said it way better than me, but, um, uh, but yeah, so I've, every goal that I've set for myself, moving out of Montreal and buying a house, um, uh, getting engaged, proposing to my now fiance and all that, right. those were all goals for 2025 and beyond. And now we're ahead of schedule. So not only is setting the goals and then after that, determining going from the end goal all the way to breaking it down, reverse engineering to break it down, dissecting it to those daily habits. But those daily habits, once you start doing and holding yourself accountable, very important, holding yourself accountable to it. Well, most of the times, and I see it for a lot of people, you end up being ahead of schedule because you don't even realize the compounding effect of that 1% every day. And I'm every day. You've always talked to me about I'm that. So big because it's true. And it's, it's again, atomic habits, but it's just also look, even if you had not the best day, but you're able to find one area where you got 1% better. Hey, I read 10 pages today. Oh, I love, like, you know, this, this, this meeting didn't go as well as I wanted to. But where did I get a 1%? And if you can end every day knowing that you got 1% better, first of all, you feel a lot better. And you just know I'm going in the right, right direction. We're moving towards the goal. We're not there yet, but we're going in the right direction. That 1% and 1% is so small. But if you can find it every day, whether it's, hey, I had a great workout today, 1%. Or, hey, read 10 pages of a book, 1%. Hey, had this great meeting, 1%. So like you said, business, health, family, wherever. But if you go get that 1%, whatever the category, or maybe all three, and it could be more than 1%, but just by getting those, pff, your life five years from now, you're unrecognizable, 100%. I guarantee that. That I totally agree with Zach. And it makes me think of a stock market chart. You know, you're, you're going up, you're getting better a bit, then there's a, a little slowdown. But you're, then you, it comes back up. At the end of the day, you're always moving in that top right corner. You're always improving, which is huge. What I'm going to ask our listeners and the ones, I don't know if Ryan could cut this up for Instagram or YouTube, but I want someone to comment their goals, put mm -hmm. it in the comments, like share them. Doesn't matter how big, how small, share with us what your goal is and what you plan on doing with that. I, I love hearing people and having them put them down. And the bigger for me, the better. I just, it, it lights me up. So. That's yeah, and I'll, I'll I'll take it even a step further. We're saying, yeah, put it in the comments because first of all, it's public. Yeah. So now there's kind of that degree of accountability. But then just po like, post it, make a story this week. Post that outlandish goal, whether it's, guys, watch me. Five years from now, I'll have my own business. I'll be wrote this, this, this. Or, hey, I mean, I, I guess you can't really say uh, publicly, hey, I'm quitting my nine to five by the next year because if your boss follows you. But uh, but yeah, let, like let's see it in the comments, share it, and I encourage people to even find someone to hold them accountable, or even use social media to your advantage and have them hold you accountable. That's it. Well, I think that's a wrap up for our second coffee break there, and this uh, and this little Friday. So that's it on my side. I, I love this conversation, and I think there's a lot of things that we can uh, take from this one. No, I loved it. So. Uh, everybody, if you enjoy these conversations, please uh, subscribe, like, comment, share, because whenever you do share, you allow us to help more people. And uh, who knows, maybe someone is watching this and this was the nudge they needed to write down that goal and start holding themselves accountable. So if you like it, subscribe, like, comment. Have a great weekend, guys, and we will see you next week. Oh. I'm going to add one thing to that. 
we read Zach and we talked about it to be in the top 1% of podcasts, just as far as volume goes, 21 people don't even make it to 21. So I guarantee you guys, you will see 21 <laughs> of these videos, no matter what on our platform. So Zach, uh, it's, it's out there and I'm, I'm holding you to hell to hold me accountable for this too. So I know with both of us at it there, it's uh, it's a no-brainer. It's going to happen. Yeah. 19 more weeks until we're uh, top uh, 1%. Almost That's there. It. All, All right. right. Take, care, everyone. Take care, guys. Have a good one.